The Digital Ministry plans to formulate a policy on quantum technology to further strengthen personal data protection. Minister Gobin Sindio said the ministry is also looking at data holistically to improve cyber infrastructure's resilience, thus preparing the nation to face the new technology. Quantum tech that can handle data encryption in under five minutes compared to years using normal computers will pose a new challenge for the national cybersecurity sector. It stated that while the technology is able to speed up computing, it can also be used to break encrypted data contained in applications like WhatsApp in just a few minutes. Quantum computing uses a qubits which can be zero, one or both at once, making it much faster than traditional computers and supercomputers in solving complex problems. On the bright side, it can potentially revol revolutionize industries by breaking codes, optimizing routes and investments, simulating molecules for new pharmaceutical drugs, enhancing artificial intelligence and performing complex calculations swiftly. Joining us today is Sharola Art, founder and CEO of Center of Applied Data Science, CADS. I want to say, let's start with the challenges first. I want to say thank you very much for joining me. And firstly, the Digital Ministry plans to formulate a policy on quantum technology by the end of this year. What specific elements should this policy include to effectively address the unique challenges posed by quantum computing, particularly in terms of data encryption and cybersecurity? Hi, Nina. I think Hi. that's a very, very important question. Um, I think one of the, you know, I've got six things that they should look at, but I think the main thing they really need to look at is regulatory framework, and I think they're already addressing that. Uh, which establishes, you know, policies in data privacy, intellectual property, and technology transfer. And I think cybersecurity infrastructure is extremely important because when we talk about quantum technology, it is a very advanced, um, you know, um, technology, but in a very infant stage. So a lot of research needs to be done there. And I think it's important to have the cybersecurity infrastructure in. And international collaboration is really important. I think countries like US and EU have done so much in quantum technology uh, and a country like Malaysia, if you want to make an impact in that, we need to have that kind of collaboration. But other than that, you know, we, we have to look at things like um, R&D, really encourage a lot of R&D, look at public-private partnership. I think that would be very crucial uh, for all these policies that the government is looking at putting in place by end of the year. As you mentioned that we need to increase R&D, maybe uh, and foster public-private uh, partnerships, collaboration and quantum technology is also expected to revolutionize data encryption and cybersecurity. How prepared is Malaysia's current cyber infrastructure to handle the potential threats posed by quantum computing such as the breaking of encrypted data? What gaps exist in our current cybersecurity framework that need urgent attention? Okay, this is a um, probably a popular question to address. We are, I would say, in a very early stage of readiness. And we have heard this and constantly we've been attacked in many, many levels, um, getting our data out there. And I'm glad the Malaysian government is taking this very, very seriously. So since we are uh, a lot to do, right? But it's always good to have these initiatives taken uh, you know, encryption vulnerability, our current encryption methods are very vulnerable to quantum attacks. And Malaysia's existing encryption standards may be insufficient, but I, I, that's the whole point, right? We are putting that in place, and that is why there was an MOU with the telcos and the cybersecurity uh, to be able to address that. Uh, gaps in the framework, you know, we have lack of quantum resistance standards in that, because it is fairly new. So a lot of research and time needs to be put in that, and we do need the collaboration to do that. Um, awareness and expertise, we do not have that in Malaysia. We, we don't have enough, let me put that way. And I think it's important when you start getting the awareness out, we'll hopefully get more and more experts and, and researchers interested to take this up as a key learning part. And investment. R&D investment becomes very, very key when we talk about quantum technology. So it's not just talking about a framework, just talking about rolling it out. We really need to have the investment and the vision to continue this for many, many years because it's not a short-term project. 
Yes, definitely investment is very important uh, to fund and is considered as a support for this. And given that quantum technology can uh, decrypt data in minutes, how will this impact the security of widely used applications like WhatsApp and online banking system in Malaysia? And we know more than 50% uh, of Malaysian are using uh, online banking and digital transaction. And what steps are being taken or should be taken to upgrade encryption protocols to resist the quantum attacks? You know, I take so much pride in calling out Malaysians to be so digital savvy. And, you know, it excites me because this is all about AI and data analytics. But again, yes, what you talked about, uh, you know, internet banking, WhatsApp, for years I didn't have to bother about WhatsApp being, uh, you know, uh, my data being breached because WhatsApp always had a good encryption in place. But now with, uh, you know, we're talking about quantum technology, it takes you know, like you said, right, split seconds to be able to break through that. So, you know, it's a huge risk because we're going to compromise things like financial losses and privacy violations. And that's been a number one thing in Malaysia constantly, like bank scams. Even even more scamming an individual is higher than breaking into uh, their banking app. But this could add on to that. That's really important. The protocols that we talk about, you know, upgrading encryption protocols, and I think it's really um, key that the telcos are already looking at it and putting it in that place. Um, and continuous monitoring and assessment. So that's the whole point, right? It doesn't mean you implement it once and we all are safe. And I mm -hmm. think it's important to continually monitor and assess that, like any firewall you have in any you know, IT department. But as for the right yard, I think now we have to be more and more vigilant when we're using things on our mobile phone, internet banking and what's our, what kind of information we sent out. I think we too have to take responsibility in how we use this technology that's available for us. And Sharala, and what kind of advancement? So we do have to do a monitoring uh, to continuous follow up. So what kind of advancement have we made in developing quantum resistant cryptography in Malaysia? And how soon can this be implemented across critical national infrastructure? Um, maybe other than investment, uh, funding, uh, R&D and fostering public partner uh, partnerships, collaboration. Is that a strategy that collaborate with international experts and institutions in this area? I think that's absolutely important to do that. Because if you do understand, right, quantum computing and technology, I think I wrote an article like in 2017 as that's going to be a trend. And it's still uh, at the nascent stage, right? For Malaysia, it definitely is. Countries that are invested a lot in this is US, EU, uh, China, and it's still far away from being commercialized. So can you imagine, right? Uh, it, it's growing so rapidly, but to commercialize any product on quantum technology, we are, we are so far away. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important if Malaysia wants to be a game changer in this region, we have to very quickly start working with uh, all these international um, countries that's already invested far more and advanced in this. And yet, it's still you know in an early stage. So it is quite scary. Uh, the outcome of it and the misuse of it might uh, supersede us being ready for it. So I think absolutely, right? And and it cannot be a short term, yeah? It cannot be another rollout that we think it's hype and sexy and then we forget about it after two years because it could take years before this, we could actually see the impact. I mean, even a decade. So this has to be serious if we're going to go down this journey. It cannot be just an announcement. Yeah. Yeah, even though we are at the initial phase, there's still a long way to go. And definitely whether we like it or not, ready or not, uh, Malaysia and even across the globe, we have to embrace quantum technology. And this technology requires specialised knowledge and skill. How is Malaysia preparing its workforce, talent skill, talent pool, particularly in the fields of cyber security and information technology to meet the demands of the quantum technology? Are there sufficient educational and training programmes in place to be a quantum literate workforce? I believe, for what I've seen, it will. we are not there yet. You know, we're still struggling to get data and AI, uh, you know, general cyber security talent in the country. Uh, Nina, if you do realize, Malaysia do have the highest brain drain in this region. Global average is 3.3%, Malaysia is about 5 
percent. So I think it's really important not only to invest in getting these talents excited to take up STEM and cybersecurity as a um, you know as a career. It's also important to retain this talent in this part of the world if Malaysia wants to succeed uh, in this technology. Uh, all right, maybe lastly, Sharala, what is Malaysia's long-term visions for integrating quantum technology into its national infrastructure beyond just cybersecurity? As you mentioned earlier, it cannot be a short term, it has to be a long term. Is there a comprehensive roadmap that outlines the phases of quantum technology adoption, potential risks and mitigation strategies? I think um, the framework can be developed further, right? It's just not on security. We're talking about AI, which is my, you know, which is my deepest passion and data analytics, and it can do so much more mm. uh, in all this um, technology. And I think the framework has a great initial uh, outline. There's more details. I think the collaboration with private uh, sectors would give you, and industry expert can actually enhance that framework. Uh, very important to look at that. And it's also important not to get everything perfect at one go. I think it's really important to roll it out in phases to understand where this is going, right? Remember, this is an infancy stage for us, right. but not for the threats out there. So I think it's important to do it in phases to get the debt. All right, again, I want to say thank you very much for helping us understand the Malaysian readiness to resist harm and even harness advantage of quantum time. Again, I want to say thank you very much to Sharala Asid, founder and CEO, Center of Applied Data Science. And definitely all of our discussion here will be featured in astrawani.com and across all social media platforms.